Tell me if you've heard this one before. Today is a very big day for this series and for this team. We find ourselves back in the conference final for the first time in a long time. And today could be much more than that. We will finish the playoffs no matter what that entails, whether it is just the conference final or whether or not we make it back to the Stanley Cup Final, again, in God knows how long. We have seen so many different iterations of this team, and somehow, some way, this is the squad that has found that bit of chemistry. And admittedly, I'm a little bit concerned for today's episode because we were on that good run, I stopped it, we went with the cliffhanger, and that might cost us, if you believe in that sort of thing, in terms of backing out of the mode, loading back in, our luck may suddenly change. This is hardly the strongest squad we've ever had in terms of overalls, but the individual stats, the individuals themselves, have found that bit of success. You look at someone like Melnick, who probably shouldn't have 11 goals in 14 games, but he very much does. I mean, you look at the talent level that we have down in the AHL, the amount of depth that we have to potentially be able to call somebody up if someone, say the three members of the fourth line, continue to struggle and not put up points, we have so many options, and I'd like to think, rather than it being RNG, that if we make the right moves at the right time, we play the right players in the right spots, that this could be the year. We take on the Chicago Blackhawks in this round. Let's take a look at what we are up against. We have that champion status, and I hope, I almost pray, that that comes true. Let's see what we have in Chicago. Daryl Winquist, 31 years old at this point, a former fifth-round pick of the Habs, is with Gustavs Bykoff and Landon Galliardi. Not an amazing top line, and really when you look at their squad in general, there's no superstars. Winquist is the closest that they have, but it is a very well-rounded team. Billy Heinen, Reed Kunitz, and Kelly Costi, Kent Chung, Kip Randall, and Aiden Tillett. Timo Altonen, what is this, FIFA? That's awesome. And Bryant Nickerson, Milan Tankrat rounds out that fourth line defensively. That's not a name I wanted to see. Former LA Kings great, Maurice Marchand. And that is painful because he is one hell of a defenseman, averaging 28 minutes, uh, 28 minutes per game. Which, by the way, I would love to see NHL on top of so many other things from so many other games. We really should be able to manage the amount of ice time each line gets, especially top pairings for playoff circumstances. Think about the minutes that, say, as Zidane Chara played throughout 2011, Duncan Keith and the minutes that he played in Chicago's Cup runs. We should be able to manage that, right? Right. Regardless, he is with Alan Muirs, former first-round pick of the Minnesota Wild. Second pairing is Ashton McCullough with Gilbert Renaud. Mika Pakarainen is with Mats Nilsson. On that third pairing, the goaltender, 85 overall, Roger LeClaire, who is killing it up to this point in the playoffs. Had a 925 save percentage in the regular season. It's it's interesting. It's his very first playoff run, though. Matt Bichuk, Kanon, and Marta Kynan. It's the healthy scratches. Again, that is not the strongest roster in the world, but it is the type of roster where if that team wins the cup, you're not really all that surprised. Let's get down to business. This will either be the third round in the draft or the third round in the Stanley Cup Final. It is going to be speed sim style yet again, like we did in the prior round. And fingers crossed, things go our way. Game one in Chicago. Let's go. First period, and that's a decent start. Landon McCult and Ben McCauley with the goals. Heinen gets one back. 13 shots to nine. Second period. Ho -ho, okay, then. Let's not use up all of our goals for this round or for this series. I mean, it's the same thing, really. Ben McCauley gets a second of the game. Hartnell and Vienno add two more. It is 5-1. to one. We sim the third period, and the score holds. 5-1 is your final in Game 1, and that is a statement victory on the road. Pedersen came on in relief and made 20 saves, didn't allow a goal. Connor Walchuk, the third star, with 27 saves out of 28 attempts. 5-1 final in game one. Big time, big time performance and a solid effort from the offense. But one has to wonder whether or not we have what it takes to replicate that output. Time will tell. Game two. Let's see what happens. 
First period, Chicago gets the opening goal with Costi. Second period, we have taken the lead. Angelo Bachman and Steven Moroz. Third period, is it a win? Is it a loss? Or are we going to overtime? It is a win! 2-1 your final. Steven Moroz's goal with three minutes left in the second period stays, holds, hangs on to be the game winner. And we have a 2-0 series lead on the Blackhawks. Not what I expected. <laughs> I gotta admit, I mean, I'm a little bit, you know, I'm a little bit of a pessimist when it comes to this game. I always think things are gonna go poorly. We have outscored them seven to two over the first two games as we head back home for game three. And needless to say, this is the most important game of this series since we lost the Stanley Cup final. First period of this third game. And we have the 1-0 lead, Angelo Bachman with the goal. Second period, Chicago ties it. Tillett with the goal. They have an edge in shots. We're tied on the board. Quick sim in the third period. Again, is it a win, a loss, or are we going to overtime? It is a win! Melnick! Melnick's goal. Just 40, not even 38 seconds into it. Is the winner, Ricci, with the insurance... We have a 3-1 to one lead on Chicago, and we are one game away from going back to the Stanley Cup Final. That is... I can't... I, oh my god. Connor Walchuk's allowing just one goal against in this series. We have four... <laughs> we have four opportunities to make this happen. Pittsburgh up 2-1 to one on Philly. Game game four. Can we end this series? Is this the team that can finally get it done and make it back to the Stanley Cup final? First period. Chicago has the lead. It's Chung with the opening goal. Second period is scoreless. Quick sim of the third period. Maybe not. Let's go, let's go with the short sim here. Stefan Vienno with the goal. We are tied. Come on, we can do this. Please, let this, let this be the year. We have a few more chances after the season, but let this be the year. Heinen scores just after the power play ends, I do believe. Is that enough for Chicago to stay in this series? It is. Muir's with the empty netter. And the Blackhawks aren't done yet. They take game four by the score of 3-1. to one. Leclerc, 37 saves. That's a disappointing loss. Our first opportunity goes to waste. I'm going to go right back, I think, to simming this series as we had for the first three games. Quick simming all three periods. We'll go right back in from the calendar as well. Does that make a difference? Probably not, but let's get back to it. Game five in Chicago. Can we end this series on our second attempt? First period, Blackhawks had the lead. Randall with the lone goal. Second period, Pakarainen. Third period, Chicago takes it three to nothing, and we are going to game six. Two opportunities to end this series, two opportunities wasted. And if Chicago wins this sixth game, we go from outscoring them 10 to three to being outscored six to one over the next two games. As Pittsburgh advance, they have not. Phillies won two straight. They're up three to two. And I'm not exactly wanting to change up the lines, but we might have to. Like, we need something here. That third line is just not clicking. And in fairness, neither is the bottom six. Oh my god, a lot of people are getting ripped apart. That top line's still doing well. But, yeah, we, we need to change things up here. Because certain Lions are just getting ripped to shreds. Baines is going down. Mayorov's going down. I know he's putting up points, but still. And who else is brutal? Ben, I'm sorry, man. But if you're if you're getting outplayed, I don't care what your point total is. Not one bit. Absolutely brutal. Oh, man. I don't know if we're overreacting or not. I mean, again, plus-minus isn't exactly a crucial stat, but there's a difference between a couple of, uh, you know, a couple of bad plus-minuses here and there and basically everyone outside of the top line getting absolutely shelled 
There's a little bit of a difference, to be honest. I might bump up Macaulay and drop down Sorinen. I think it's a little bit harsh to drop Macaulay, but we do need to change up that second line. I don't know what to do here. I don't know what to do here. That second, oh, excuse me, that second line, as we had it, they were putting up points, but defensively, they just had absolutely nothing going for them. It's a tough call. Macaulay has to get dropped no matter what. Baines, plus minus wise, is horrific, but he does have eight points. I'm just worried that that second line is getting outplayed as much as they are, you know? I want to keep them together because they've been putting up points, but we, we need to change something up. I think, you know, if we look here, like Ralph Ricci only having four points. I know he's on the fourth line. Tarasov only has four points. I think, I don't know if I want to adjust this and go with some of the guys we have down in the AHL because everyone in the AHL has been given an opportunity and has failed. Think about how many times Brian Boros failed, Svoboda. I don't think I want to call up anybody. I'd rather stick with who we have and who got us here, but we need, we need something. We need a spark if we're going to survive this and not blow a three to nothing series lead. And I'm honestly not sure what the answer is here. I can't say with certainty. I want to double check there. 76 for face-offs. Fortunately, too, a lot of these righties, not, not very good on the face-off draw. All right, Ralph, you've struggled, but we're going to put you with Moroz and Ivanov. We're going to have McCauley probably with Hartnell. And then I think we'll have Baines as our fourth line guy. So Sarayan in four points and a minus one. Mayoroff. I'm going to swap those two. And Tarasov, four points. I think we're good. Hopefully. So the change there. I don't know if I, I, don't know if I want to move Moroz over, though. I kind of do. Ricci can play center, can he? I'm panicking here. I know we only lost two in a row, but the warning signs are there to make a change now or we are in a whole lot of trouble. Thus, here we are. You know, I'm good with Moreau's being on that side. Defensively, none of the defense pairings are really struggling, or at least it's not overly alarming. Obviously, the numbers are down a little bit from the first two rounds. Game six, are these lineup changes enough to spark something with this team, or are we facing a nightmare scenario of going to a seventh game? One win is all we need. Go back to the cup final. First period of game six. Yes. Yes. Come on. Melnick, Viano, and Moroz. Still got 40 minutes of regulation to go. Second period. I think I can I think I can breathe. <laughs> I think I think I can breathe. I think it's gonna be okay. Bachman, Viano, and Ricci. Third period. The California Golden Seals are going to the Stanley Cup Final for just the second time in this series. It is 2038, and we are just now making it back. Will it be Philly or Pittsburgh? They're going to a Game 7. We are just now making it back after all this time. Think about, well, number one, just how long this series has gone on, because, of course, it's been, hey, start playing this game, do a series on this game. So... Obviously, it's, it hasn't been every other day like it normally is. It's been every couple of days, once or twice a week, really, if you think about it. And think of all the changes to the team that we've seen. How long has it been since Howard Fragapani, Dylan Redden? How long has it been since we've moved on from them, since they've been the core? How many different things we've tried? How many things we tried when they were here to get this team going? And now this could be it. Robinson, Melnick, 19 points. Bachman's point a game. VNO is over a point a game. Moroz, Ivanov still without a goal, but I will take it. Of course, you would have seen the point totals for the majority of the guys when we were just looking a minute ago. I still can't say with the utmost certainty that I believe this team can get it done, even though we are going to the conference, or even though we're going to the cup final. We just won in the conference final. Because there are still some warning signs, some underperforming players. 
but we are going back. Will it be Chicago or will it be Philadelphia? We're about to find out in the Stanley Cup Final. It will be the Philadelphia Flyers, California, and Philadelphia. We'll battle it out. Let's take a look at what we're up against. The roster will remain the same. Again, the players that got us here are the players who are going to get the opportunity to win the whole damn thing. The line combinations might change, though. This is an uphill battle. And there's an old familiar face there as well. Isaac Commodore. Former second overall pick of the Sharks. A relatively prolific score. And at times, a tremendous playoff performer. Centered by 32-year-old Stanley Festerling. Somebody else capable. 50 to 70 points. Former 10th overall pick of the Bruins back in 2024. And then Clifford Bolton. The Boulton. Who, again, 60 to 80 points. And has done some damage in the playoffs before. <laughs> he is a former number three overall pick of the Edmonton Oilers. Second line, Brendan McGinnis. Former seventh round pick of the Flyers. And look at what he's become. Absolutely ridiculous. 50 to 60 point guy over the past five seasons. And then, Steve Krogh. A former second round draft pick of your California Golden Seals. In the past few seasons, still a 40 to 50 point guy. And in the playoffs, hit or miss. But the past two playoff runs, he's done pretty well for himself. Ty George's fifth overall pick of the Flyers at 22 years old. Also on that team. Third line, Edgar Champion, which is a great name. Former second overall pick of the Flyers. Centered by Ricky Nesbitt, former fourth round pick of the Hurricanes. And Russell Bufflin, former fourth round pick of the Florida Panthers. Fourth line, Tate Hewson, former first round pick of the Flyers with Maxime Lefebvre. Lefebvre, Lefebvre, I, fuck. You know, I was just streaming earlier and that name came up. I've heard it pronounced a couple of different ways. Don't tell me how to... Well, you can't tell me how to pronounce it correctly. I don't I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Maxime Brett Favre. And the right wing, Callie Modine. Former first round pick of the Flyers. Well-rounded. Needless to say, they have some top-notch talent. Especially Bolton. I don't know if the defense and goaltending can hold up. And defensively... That is our opening. We have a better defense on paper for what that's worth, and the answer is very little. But we do have a better defense. Uh, Oliver Muller, the German indeed. Former second overall pick of the Nashville Predators. Is their top guy, Eric Love, Malachi Reimprecht, Filatov. Filatov was not ours. The goaltender could decide this. And it's, oh my god. God, a 91 overall with an 89 backup. Don Pache. Brutal. And Spencer Gilbert as the backup. Healthy scratches of Grattan, Delzato, and DeVoe. We are outmatched. We are the underdog in this series. And for the hell of it, let's see what we would have been up against had Pittsburgh not completely choked. And it's, it's tough to say. That's a decent lineup as well. Defensively, that also would have been a little bit tough to deal with. Goaltender, there was no, there was no easy road here, was there? <laughs> there was no easy road to the cup final. I do want to take a look at the overalls, even though I don't agree with how the overalls are calculated this year. We do have a better defense. They have the advantage in terms of offense and goaltending. Let's do this for just the second time again. The California Golden Seals are in the Stanley Cup Final, taking on the 56-win Philadelphia Flyers. We've been underdogs for this whole series. Let's see if the underdog can pull off a miracle. I am desperate for it. 
I accidentally sim the first period quickly before we could apply a little bit of hype to it, but that's okay. Ricky Nesbitt gets the opening goal of the first period. Second period, hello. Hello there. <laughs> Hartnell, Baines, two quick goals. Landon McCult makes it three. We're 20 minutes away from stealing game one on the road. Three, two, one. And we choked. And we choked. Two goals in five seconds from Bufflin alone. Ouch. 20 minutes away from a win. And we lose it in regulation. A two goal lead evaporates. And that is the equivalent of uh, getting shoved in a locker. <laughs> as the Flyers just just easily brush off that threat, win the game, no problem. Game two. Oh boy. We need this. We need this so badly. First period. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Muller, Bufflin, Krogh, and Champion, it is four to nothing. Two goals from that fucking corner. It just doesn't make any sense. Second period. We get two goals back. McCauley and Baines. Third period. The long goal, the empty netter for the Flyers with 18 seconds left. 5-2 is your final. We blow a two-goal series lead. And almost don't even show up for game two. They outscore us nine to five over the first two games of this series. And desperate times may call for desperate measures, although I don't know what exactly that would be. Defensively, in the second pairing has gotten roughed up a little bit, but there's nothing overly alarming. It's a tough call. Six points for Mayorov. I still don't think he's really done anything. Baines with ten points. Six points for Tarasov. So Reinen's going back down out of necessity. I think he has to. Hartnell with seven points. We're going to try to just reorder this based off of who is actually performing in total throughout the playoffs. Obviously, McCauley will stay ahead of Baines. Ricci on six points. And it is uh, back to the third line with you, <laughs> unfortunately. Ivanov, 14 points, 13 points for Moroz, and then of course that top line will stay intact. I think we are going to reunite Moroz, Ivanov, and Macaulay. It's just whether or not I want to swap the wings around. And I think, I think I'll leave them like that. Or not. I don't know. And whether or not it really matters, it's a topic of discussion, I suppose. I'm going to reward Tarasov for playing relatively well. Let's go with Tarasov, Baines, Hartnell. I don't really care about having righties on the right at this point. I just need someone who can play center, and that's the problem. Nobody really can. We have to have, ideally, Baines and Hartnell on different lines. Let's go. Let's drop Hartnell. hate to say it, but let's drop Hartnell. He'll be the center there. It'll be Mayorov, Hartnell, Sarinen, Tarasov, Baines, and Ricci. Second line again, Macaulay, Ivanov, and Moroz reunited. That's about the best we can hope to do. Game three. A loss here would be absolutely devastating. We can get back into the series, though. First period, we outscore them 2-1. to one. McCult and Hartnell with the goals. Festerling gets one back with three seconds left. Second period, again, 2-1 to one. in terms of the goals scored. Macaulay and Bachman, but a late goal, somewhat, not that late, halfway through the period, from Love, brings them back to within two. We've been in this situation once before in this series. We blew it. Can we hold on this time? Yes, we can. We add two more, Macaulay and Sarinen. 6-2 is your final. And a 2-1 series lead for the Philadelphia Flyers. It's where this series stands. Ivanov 
with a strong performance. Six to two. And now, <laughs> the attention shifts to game four. Oh God, I want us to win so badly. So, so badly. We've had series in the past where success just never came. Oh, and this might be no different. Game four. Do we have what it takes to tie this series up? You know this game loves to have the home team win constantly. And then lose. You know how that works. First period. 2-1. California. Georges gets the opening goal. VNO and Hartnell tie it and give us the lead. Second period. It's a goal apiece. Baines and Commodore. We have a one goal lead heading into the third period. Either it's a win and the series is tied, a loss and we face a 3-1 deficit, or we're going to overtime. 3-2-1. It is overtime. Nesbitt with 8-12 remaining. And it's similar stakes now. Another third period lead blown. Tied series, two game deficit, overtime. What's it gonna be? We need this. We need this so badly. Power play, please. No, come on. Another power play, please. Yes! Landon McCult. Perhaps. Between he and Francois, the most prolific scoring defenseman we've had in this series, in a series where we've had some decent defensemen. Landon McCult gets the winner. We have battled back from 2 0 down to tie this series. At two games apiece, it's a best of three. From this point on, the home team has yet to lose. Game five. Team stays the same. Here we go. Here we go. First period, two to one, California. Mayoroff gets the opening goal. Lafarve. I know, there's not even a, it's a joke, Brett Favre. Bachman gives us the lead. Second period, 3-1. Moreau's scores. We are in the exact same situation we were in game one. It speaks for itself. Third period, 3-2-1. And the California Golden Seals are one win away from winning the Stanley Cup. Moroz with his second goal of the game. We are one game away. 23 saves for Connor Walchuk. We are one game away. And I fully expect us to lose at home because that's just the type of thing EA loves to do. <laughs> I fully expect this. I feel like I have to change something up for the sake of it, which a lot of people might disagree with, and I get that, but I feel like it's necessary. I'm going to change all of the wingers to the other side just to see if that sparks something new, because the team, if you haven't noticed, always the team always seems to respond well to some new line combinations, or they just completely blow it. We'll find out. The line combos are the same. There's just players on the different sides. We are 60 minutes away. We have two opportunities. I don't know if we'll be able to get it done in one. Here we go. 60 minutes away from finally accomplishing our goal. And it's on home ice. First period. 2-0 Seals, Bachman, and Baines. Second period, 4-1 to one, California. Bolton, Vienno, McCauley. We are 20 minutes away from winning the Stanley Cup. Finally. Third period, hold on for dear life. Please, power play chance for both teams goes to waste. Another power play chance for the Seals. Eight minutes. Seven minutes. Sorinen makes it five. The California Golden Seals 
are finally going to do it. After all of this time, it's 2038. And after all of this time, I'm not switching the camera because I always forget to switch it back and it's a pain in the ass for when I'm like, oh, I'm gonna play ESHL and then, oh yeah, it doesn't fucking do anything and it sucks and I hate it, so sorry. I know True Broadcast, a lot of people like it. Oh my god. We talked about it earlier this episode. The Dylan Reddens, the Howard Fragapanis, Philadelphia has one of those players, Steve Krogh, that we had on this roster for years. Think of all of the different names and faces as Hartnell almost walked away with a breakaway. Think of all of the different names and faces. Krogh, there he is, gets stopped by Connor Walchuk, who didn't even start. Big glove save. He didn't even start this series, this season. He started the series. He didn't even start this season. As our goaltender, he started as the backup. We were forced to trade Ockerland after an absolutely horrific start. And now we are under one minute away from winning the whole damn thing. And there's a goal. What a move. What a move. Was that Sarayden again? Oh my god. What a cut in, insult to injury, 6-1 is your scoreline, Kari Sarinen, his second goal of the night, just his fourth of the playoffs, absolutely unbelievable, absolutely unreal, Kari Sarinen seals the deal. I cannot believe this is finally happening. The ungodly amount of turnover. All of the disappointment year after year of top players not being able to get it done. And it's this squad that barely sneaks into the playoffs with 40 wins that will upset a 56 win Flyers team, was it? This was the squad to finally get it done. Only a few seasons left in the 25 year limit. But it will not take 25 years for us to win the whole damn thing. It is a moment that I truly believed we would not see in this series. Nearly 25 years, the full limit that it took. Dead silence in the arena because, yeah, it's, it's great. I always hate that part of the cup celebration. <laughs> I cannot believe that this of all years was the year. This of all the squads was the squad to finally get it done. Nowhere near the best team we've ever had. But all of those doubts can finally be put aside. Would there have been a dynasty on our hands if we had done things a little bit differently? Perhaps. As Stefan Viano wins the Conn Smythe with 28 points. But it doesn't matter what could have been done differently. Because at the end of the day, at the very least, we won one. And that's good enough for me. All the ups and downs with all the players, a Kim Nylander scoring all the goals in the world and then just completely falling off. And this was the team to do it.
I don't even know who's wearing the C right now. Is it still Ivanov? Can you imagine? Is this Ivanov? I think it is. After all of this time, Sergei Ivanov is the captain who's going to raise the cup for the Golden Seals. Oh my god. All the calls to get rid of him. And old man Ivanov is the first to raise the cup as the crowd is deathly silent. McPherson raises the cup second. Insane. EA, please. We need, like, you need music blaring and the crowd going a little bit more crazy than this. And the players need to be hooting and hollering. Like, come on. Step your game up. The animation itself is the best cup celebration or the best trophy celebration, I think, in the game. Outside of maybe FIFA's, even though FIFA's has had the same one for a long time. Why am I complaining about the animation? I can I can do this later. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. I think that's the problem. It's not the most miraculous cup win. Like, we've won at the death of some series in the past. Connor Waldchuk, oh my god. I don't know if you're a Hall of Famer. But this was a Hall of Fame level performance. To take over as the starter less than 15 games into the season. Less than 10 games into the season. And he leads us all the way. The Golden Seals are champions. After all of this time, we've finally done it. Beating Philadelphia 6-1. to one, Winning four straight games after dropping the first two. We are go <laughs> We're not going. We're going on. We're going. Uh, going into the fucking history books where we're going. We just won the Stanley Cup. I cannot believe this just happened. We'll find out who wins the Calder Cup before taking a look at the awards and everything else. The Milwaukee Admirals take it. And it's, it's that image right there. It's something that I've been waiting so long to see. The California Golden Seals have finally, finally done it. Knocking out the President's Trophy winners in the process. After so many names and faces left the team. Potential picks. Eli Maroon in Nashville who went on to success. And we finally get the job done. VNO wins the con. Smythe, Eli Maroon won it five years ago. Absolutely insane that this was finally the team to get the job done. And when you look again at the team that did it, you look at the forwards, it was that top line for the most part that carried the weight. VNO, 28 points. Bachman was indeed the top line center that we needed all along. The former number three overall pick, 25 points, and Sergei Ivanov, the grizzled vet of the team, at 32 years old, 22 assists, not a single goal. We held on to him with the goal of having him be our second line center because he just couldn't quite get the point totals that we needed out of a top line center, and it worked. He has been on the squad for 14 years. <laughs> 15 years, actually, if we started in 2023. 15 years of Ivanov. <laughs> Think about that. If that doesn't put into perspective how long the series has been going for, I don't know what does other than the fact that Sergei Ivanov started on this roster in 2023-2024. He gets his cup as captain. Robinson Melnick was great. Yes, I just accidentally punched my desk. Ben McCauley, 20 points in 26 games. Steven Morose, not quite. I mean, again, you want to talk about an up-and-down player who at one point you thought he would be absolutely be the one to carry us. And, I mean, he has been great in the past seven years since being called up. I can't even necessarily complain. 30 to 40 goal getter. And then from there... The numbers drop off a bit, but they are fairly well-rounded with Hartnell, Kari Sarainen, who had a great final game, Mayorov, Ricci, 
was dead last in points, and that's saying something that an 87 overall was dead last. He also takes a lot of penalty minutes. Defensively, it's these two. And if you would have told me that a third round pick and a second round pick would have been probably the two best defensemen that we've had in the series, I would not have believed you. But Rene Francois, I mean, hell, I didn't even think Francois would be the best Francois in this series, capable of anywhere from 30 to 50 points. And in the playoffs, 20 points in 26 games. And Landon McCult as well, out of nowhere, over the past three seasons, went from, and really just in the past two, went from obscurity to a 40-point defenseman in the NHL who put up 17 points and five goals and a cup run. He had Nachushkin... Conacher and McPherson, Ling and Shattenkirk were not trusted outside of their six-game appearance to get the job done. And again, the story of, Gre- of Gregory Conowalchuk. Fifth-round pick was viewed at a time as our last chance. Probably the last guy in line who could get the job done for us if everything went wrong, which it did with Torsten Ackerlund. He takes over at the beginning of the season and doesn't look back. His first ever, his first ever playoff run as a starting goaltender. And he wins. Absolutely unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable what this team just accomplished. I do want to move forward towards the draft because I want to be able to get a full look at the scope of this team with trade values and everything. As you look at the top picks there, San Jose, how the mighty have fallen. I also want to see if anybody retires off of this squad, although for the most part they're far too young to. But in the year that Howard Fragapani retires, we win the Stanley Cup. And if that's not poetry, I don't know what is. And my heart is broken that the very first draft pick in this series finishes his career as a minor league player in Ottawa while we go on to win the cup. That's heartbreaking. But we gave him and others so many opportunities to get the job done. And they just couldn't. Again, if that's not poetic, I don't know what is. Carter Hart retires with an ungodly save percentage through seven hundred or through nearly seven hundred games. Defensively, I'm looking for any other familiar names. Really, that is that is absolutely insane. A lot of these guys, of course, would have been you know some real world players, and then others from that. A fictional expansion draft. But the name that sticks out there, Howard Fragapani calling it a day. Enkvist, who won cups in Nashville, I do believe. That is absolutely insane that that's how it all went down. In the year that we win, he retires. Crazy. Absolutely crazy. We also lose a couple of scouts, which is fine. Again, I want to I want to showcase what this organization is right now, because it's not in the best spot it's ever been in, but it is still in a pretty damn good spot. With Connor Walchuk leading the way, Mateo Fox is the backup. We got two goalies in the system, including Harrison, who was the next hope. If Connor Walchuk didn't pan out, and Lapalainen as well, who might go the way of Matteo Fox and never develop. Defensively, McPherson, Nachushkin, Francois, the top three. Shattenkirk didn't even play aside from those six games in the playoffs. But you look at the likes of Braxton Conacher, who's only going to get better. It is crazy what this team has done, and forward wise. Angelo Bachman, his career's just getting started from there. It's a little bit hit or miss with some of these players. It's a little bit hit or miss, but for prospects, I mean, Kari Sarainen, underrated 
and think at 21 years old, the performance he put in Game 6, what could the future be? You know, what What is his future looking like? What could be in store in the future for Kari Sarainen? This core winning was so important to us. This group winning was so important to us because they needed to. We pulled the trigger. We rebuilt. And while this isn't exactly the group that I thought would get it done, they did. And with that, barring me revisiting this series on stream, which to be honest, I might do. I might revisit this in Vegas on stream in the next couple of days. And then, of course, upload that to YouTube as well. The main run for the California Golden Seals, I think, is going to come to an end. We have a few years left, but I don't see us being in true contention. I'm not entirely sure. So I think for now, I think in general, our main run with the Golden Seals is over. We're not going the full 25. We have our Stanley Cup, and damn it, we're going to run for the hills and enjoy the fact that this series despite at times it not looking like it was going to be, this series was a success, no matter how long it took to get here. Like I said, if I revisit this series on stream, that will be uploaded, but for now, what I want from you is your opinion on who you think should be a Hall of Famer for this series, and there's a lot of history to look back on, a lot of players to contemplate. <laughs> But I want to know from you, think back through all the names, who do you think should be a Hall of Famer for this series? Let me know down in the comments below. I think we'll be seeing this team sooner rather than later. But as far as, as, far as the main run of this goes, the main saga is over. I'll see you guys. I'll see you guys in the epilogue. Thank you for supporting this series, again, it has gone on much, much longer than I ever would have expected. But of course, again, that is because of the demand to play other series. There will be a series to replace this one coming up after the real world NHL trade deadline. It will be more of a straightforward series to counterbalance what we have going on with the fantasy concept series known as a Nation United Finland edition, which if you haven't checked that out, I'm sure you have already, but feel free to. Until then, until next time, have a good one, guys. Thank you, and the California Golden Seals go out on top as Stanley Cup champions.